Oh, that's a lot to undertake. But, you know, the good news is, is that actually after the surgery, I remember coming into my room and there were just all this noise and people laughing and there was having a, it was like a party happening in right. my room and I'd just gone through this serious procedure. What's going on? What's going on? And I remember my mom, I was looking around and there were people from my church and they were all just in a, such a good mood and I'm thinking, okay, you're taking positive thinking just a little bit too far right, right now. <laughs> you know, there's something wrong with this picture. But I, I remember turning to my mom on the other side of the bed and I said, what is going on? Still coming kind of groggy from the anesthetic and she just kind of looked at me she goes don't you know and I said no I what do you mean and she said they didn't find anything and I said you've got to be kidding what do you mean they didn't find anything because still my brain's trying right. to engage you know and catch up with catch everything up. that's going on and I remember we had been praying and believing that there would not be any cancer and it would go away and it would, you know, the healing basically mm -hmm. that I was really wanting and expecting. But, but yet when it's finally there, you just kind of go, how did that happen? Because wow. it was so amazing and so fast. But that's what took place. They went in, they did the mastectomy on the right side, and all they found were fragments of the tumor that had disintegrated. There wasn't any cancer at all. The left side where they went in and did the biopsy on that second lump that they found, it turned out to be fatty tissue. Wow. And then then they tested all 26 lymph nodes perfectly normal and a bone scan later and they're saying we don't know why you're here I mean you know wow. just to that point I finally just said you know I, th I think we're looking at a miracle here yeah that's right. something bigger in store for you absolutely and you've been cancer free for how long 14 years congratulations yeah so it's really that's amazing exciting. so we're gonna just touch very briefly on um, depression basically how it started what is depression to you and how you basically came out of it? Well, you know, of course, that happened my first year of marriage. About five years later, into about the sixth year or so, I had a business that was thriving. It was doing very well. It was beginning to grow. I think we ended up, you know, doing three quarters of a million dollars in a very short period of time. But that first year, we did about 150000 And it was just wow. a little jewelry and accessory business out of the trunk of my car and the dining right. room table. It was not anything special. But that second year of business, I really was launching. I was going to really step out and do something phenomenal right. with it. And I had a huge trade show in Dallas that I was planning. Uh, unfortunately, we were part of many exhibitors that were uh, a victim of our circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather was an issue. The promoter for the show was an issue. We didn't have any control over it. Air conditioning right. went out in the facility wow. we were in. So we went for about three solid weeks in about 85 to 105 degree temperature. Oof. And it was every single day straight with no day off. And so physically, I was an emotional wreck. Mm -hmm. I didn't have enough sleep. I wasn't eating right. And uh, I think it was just the emotional pressure and the drain on me because of the business not being successful and mm -hmm. losing money every wow. single day. I think that just finally... I capsized. I would just did. Uh, right after that, not within just probably a couple of weeks after that whole ordeal, uh, 911 happened. And of course, that situation with the emotional drama and trauma of everybody going through the loss and the devastation and being glued to CNN for right. four hours a day for so many days, they're straight. It was all just a, you know, it, it all Snowball. just, yeah, it just all combined and created such this huge depression I could not bring myself out of. I began to have difficulty even getting up in the mornings. It would take me almost three hours just to get out of bed and get dressed. I had mm. anxiety attacks that would hit for no reason that would just devastate me and where I couldn't get warm and I'd have 14 blankets on. How did you get out of it? How did you realize that you needed to do something to get out of it? Well, I think, fortunately, I did have a friend that was a nurse and she started talking to me and she said, I went through postpartum depression. I had the same symptoms mm. as what you have. And she said, I think you need a you need to go to a doctor. You need someone that can counsel you as right. well as somebody write medication, you know, and help prescribe something for you. Uh, so that's what I did. I ended up actually going to two different doctors. One was a counselor that could help me with my stress and how to, you know, work properly and not be a workaholic and, you know, be able to deal with my emotions and be able to deal with the fear factor. The other a doctor actually was more of a, a psychologist that could actually prescribe medication. Mm -hmm. So she was actually a medical doctor that had that, you know, that benefit to her, her practice where she could actually go and prescribe, prescribe the right it. medication for me to support the counseling I was getting. Right. Help me be able to be in the right frame of mind to be able to apply what I was right. learning. 
So between the two, I think it's so important. Diet, exercise, getting proper amount of sleep, being able to drink water and do all these things. And there's so many wonderful things that people can benefit from if they're going through depression. But the first thing is you have to realize, I'm depressed. And in order to find that out, sometimes you have to go like on the internet or be able to do call-in talk shows or mm -hmm. be able to work with you know those things that are available to you to help understand and identify you know what are the signs of depression right how, how am I dealing with it and what can I do to get out of so it so with all the things that have happened to you how do you continually put one foot in front of the other get up every day motivate yourself and to anyone who may be going through something similar what would you say to them well I think first of all it's very important to realize that um, the one common denominator in everything. Every time I would get down and have to get back up, I knew that God was there for me. And I know that sounds kind of trite to some people because they go, oh yeah, God, you know, he always seems to be the answer. Well, it really is. He's the only thing that never changes. Mm -hmm. And he's always there with unconditional love and acceptance, which we never get from anyone else. I don't care who they are. It's always, there's always something mm -hmm. there. And that's the one thing that I think I benefited by most, I really do, is knowing that that relationship was always there to stabilize me and give me the peace that I needed at the times when I was going through things and I didn't know how to get out. Right. And so you recommend that to people. What else can... I do. And, you know, interesting enough, I went through a, even a time just not too long ago after my divorce where I had to start all over again. Right. You know, uh, you know being in your late 40s and going, oh, my gosh, here we go again. I've got to start all over again after a bankruptcy setback and a business failure and a relationship failure and all these things. Uh, I remember just hitting rock bottom, literally, emotionally, physically, right. mentally, financially, socially, in every way. I did not know how to get out. And I remember my dad kind of sat me down and he made a statement to me and he said, you know, Kenny Rogers said one time, he said, there's three things in life that can make you happy. If you have someone to love, something to look forward to, and something to do. And if you have all three of those things working, you're going to be happy. We'll keep that in mind. One last question. Would you ever consider marriage again? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> I know people are going to wonder, would she, would she marry again? You know, I make a better wife than I do a girlfriend. I, think. <laughs> I really do. I just have a, you know, I, and honestly, I can say that I have found the right one. And good. I, think, I think that that's, that's definitely uh, going to go the distance. Good, that. good. Well, I hope it does. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Jessica. If you have any questions, you can email me at jessica at jessicarector.com or go to my website at www.jessicarector.com. And also, there is going to be a new resource page available on my website. All the things that Sherry and I talked about here today, we'll have some resources available where you can get help. Thanks. See you next time on Jessica. Next time on Jessica. What do you do to keep from not, like, basically just going crazy? It's, it's almost like being in prison, except you don't have bars on the window. What's well, the difference between an anxiety attack and a panic attack? Oh, well, yes, I want to change, but... Um... If you want my look, here's where to go.